So there's been a lot of news with the Los Angeles Lakers recently. Now, the first two stories don't really mean anything considering that it has no effect on the NBA, but the third story is actually quite big. So let's talk about story number one. LeBron James is going back to number six. This is something that I didn't expect. Obviously with Anthony Davis joining the Lakers and wearing number 23, I just thought it would be Davis that had to change his number, but I guess not. LeBron James went back to number six. He tweeted it, he posted it on Instagram, so that's pretty cool. We've seen LeBron James wear number six during practice, and now he's gonna wear it for the rest of his career most likely. So, LeBron James going back to number six, not really a story, but if you didn't know, it's pretty cool. The second thing is, LeBron James is bringing back the chalk. I think we all know about the chalk. It's the return of one of the most iconic pregame rituals in the NBA of all time. And this was a pregame chalk toss that became a site which everyone knew about and he virtually did it on a nightly basis when he played for the Cleveland Cavaliers and a little bit on the Miami Heat too. But once he had his second stint with Cleveland, he started it and didn't finish it. And then when he joined the Lakers, he didn't really do it ever. So LeBron James bringing back the chalk, is that a crazy news story? Not really, but if you're a LeBron James fan, it is something that you can be like, yeah, I remember when he did in Cleveland and he's planning to bring it back. He said in a tweet, this could be making a return this coming year until forever. Stay tuned. And to me, it's pretty cool. He's not the guy that invented this chalk pregame ritual. We saw Michael Jordan do it, but this is something that LeBron James kind of made his. Now, those are the two stories that obviously do not mean anything in the NBA, but it is pretty cool that if you're a fan of the NBA and you didn't know about it. Now, the third story is actually what matters, and this is why the Los Angeles Lakers are looking very, very good next season, considering that they will have a max opening in the free agency of 2019. So the news follows as Rob Polinka is now shipping the former first round pick Mo Wagner, the former second round pick Isaac Bonga, and a D-League player in Jamario Jones to the Washington Wizards, along with the future second round pick in exchange for cash. These three players in Wagner, Bonga, and Jones are three players on the Lakers roster that needed to be traded so the Lakers could free up cap space. At this point, the Lakers only have LeBron James, Anthony Davis, Kyle Kuzma, but now they have enough salary cap to pursue a guy like Kawhi Leonard, who just stated as soon as the Wizards and Lakers made this trade that he will have a meeting with the Lakers. Do I think he will go there? Probably not, but stay tuned for my predictions video coming out later today. I believe now the Lakers will be a destination team for at least one superstar free agent. But the thing is, I do not know what they're going to do if they're going to target a massive free agent like Kyrie Irving, D'Angelo Russell, Kawhi Leonard, Klay Thompson, or if they'll try and get their bench depth even better. Because considering that they don't get a lot more cat space than they previously had, they get about six million extra dollars considering of what they had before, which is about $24 million. Now they have the ability to get a free agent and it could be a star player, but that leaves the rest of their roster to literally be on minimum contracts. But if the Lakers choose to go out and get depth, they could have a team like Rondo, Kuzma, LeBron, Davis, DeAndre Jordan, and then they can have the depth on the bench, such as a guy like JJ Redick, and a few other pieces that can fill the Lakers roster as a whole, instead of having a guy like D'Angelo Russell, who is a great player, don't get me wrong, but then you're gonna have veteran minimum guys, and then you won't be able to get a guy like JJ Redick, and you won't be able to get a guy like DeAndre Jordan, and you're literally gonna have guys that could be on that team that wanna play there, but they're still not good enough to get you to the next level, as we saw with the Golden State Warriors when they had their injuries. Another part of this was that Anthony Davis waived his trade kicker, which obviously was something that I did expect he would do, considering that he's literally getting max money and he will get max money next season. In my opinion, I kind of thought Anthony Davis was always gonna get rid of that $4.1 million trade kicker to allow the Lakers to have a better team, considering that the only reason he wanted to play for the Lakers was that he could play with LeBron, play in LA, and play with a better team than he did in New Orleans. Because when you think about it, what really is $4 million to Anthony Davis? Yeah, not much. Just like to most NBA players, LeBron James could pass $4 million to Anthony Davis and no one would even know about it. So, I had no doubt in my mind that Anthony Davis was going to waive his $4 million trade kicker, and he did, which leaves the Lakers in a very, very good situation. Now, 
I'm going to release another video today. So if you guys enjoy this video, be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you're new. Let me know what you think about the whole Lakers situation. I'm going to release my NBA free agency predictions very, very soon. So stay tuned for that. It will be up today. I wanted to get another video out for you guys if you hadn't heard about this news. Anyway, if you guys want to follow me on Instagram to stay up to date what I get up to in my personal life, be sure to do that. Subscribe if you're new, leave a like, and press the notification button if you're new. I will catch you guys in my next video. I am out. Peace.